I'm getting really tired of repeating myself every week, to be honest with you. Uh, Jags, it's, it's like driving a Formula One Grand Prix in my Ford Fiesta. It, it, it's not going to work. And as Michael Owen said, how is that team at the bottom of the league with one point? Lads, lads, lads. <laughs> I'm getting really tired of repeating myself every week, to be honest with you. Um, I felt like running up to the game, um, pretty much everyone was quite positive. There was um, good interviews from the players and the management, and there was, oddly enough, quite a lot of positivity going around the fans. Um, Line-up wise, Robinson came in, left centre-back, Ampadu pushed into the midfield at the expense of Norwood, and there was a fresh front two in Burke and Didzy. We made a fantastic start. Um, not only were we pressuring and attacking and looking solid defensively we managed to get our goal on five minutes Dave McGoldrick putting in from close range into the bottom corner this goal came from Burke pressuring Dean Henderson to where he made a mistake and it was an easy finish from McGoldrick fantastic start and something we really needed shortly after that Fleck had a chance should have gone across the keeper went to the near post missed the target he was in tons of space guys really really should have been doing better at least hit the target and not long after that, Burge had to go off with a hamstring, hamstring injury, which comes on to the next point of Jagielka coming on. Not really sure why he did. I felt like Norwood should have come on, like for like. But Jags came on and sadly, I feel like this is where our game started to take a little bit of a downhill slide. We sat off quite a lot. We were reluctant to attack. and We were much more defensive minded. And sure enough, their goal came from us not pressuring the player on the ball. And it was a ball put over the top for Rashford. Fantastic finish for the lad. Not going to complain. Ramsdale had no chance, but it exploited Jagielka's weakness because he was the one tracking back. And I feel like he would have seen the run from Rashford miles off. And so, yeah, that was a poor goal to concede. And soon after they got their second goal, another pretty simple goal, um, ball over the top, Martial, Fairly easy finish, which Ramsdale got a hand to to start with, but then it was just a tap in. So unfortunate, but again, silly mistake to make, avoidable. And they took the initiative from there. Overall, I don't think it was a bad half. We definitely looked more like the United we're used to. We were more attacking. Um, but again, yeah, they kind of took initiative from there and we didn't really get back into the game in the half. And there definitely needed to be some changes at half time. Weird second half, um, 50th minute. Uh, Phil Jagielka gets a, a yellow card on a, a hasty challenge. Um, probably could have been called back for a free kick, but Manchester United kept possession. Advantage was played. Uh, Marcus Rashford easily threw on goal. Uh, Ramsdale didn't really do much to stop it. Got a, either a hand or an elbow on it, uh, but it still went through in for 3-1. Um, unfortunate there, I think Jagielka, the entire uh, first half and part of the second half that he was on showed that he just doesn't have the pace uh, to play against these top teams in the Premier League anymore. Um, and so I appreciate him coming on and, you know, holding the back line at least for a little bit. But uh, as soon as we subbed him off, it started to look better for us. Uh, Johnny Egan got a yellow in the ninth, uh, 69th minute. Not really much there. Uh, 72nd minute, we actually defended a series of set pieces from Manchester United really well. So that was good. That was a positive for us. Uh, and then in the 73rd minute, we brought Brewster on for Burke and things really started to look up. Uh, we eventually won... Uh, a really close free kick in the 81st minute uh, on a um, Harry Maguire handball. Unfortunately, Brewster just hit it right into the wall, but we had about two minutes there where we had really solid possession. Couldn't quite get the ball into the penalty box to score, but uh, it looked positive. It looked like, okay, this game's not going to be 4-5-1. It might be 3-2, 3-3. Uh, and then we actually got the goal. Um, 86 minute, we had a corner. Uh, George Baldock... Uh, Technically, if you look at certain angles of the replay, the ball might have went out off his foot, but that's not one that VAR can get involved in. So the corner is awarded, uh, ball goes in, and uh, Victor Lindelof heads the ball right into Didzi's head, which then goes right into the net. So it's 3-2 now. I think all of us are jumping up for joy, uh, especially because Steve in our Twitter chat had said that he was going to eat dog food in this video if it was 3-3. So I'm really sad that didn't happen, um, but next time we'll have to do something like that. Uh, then uh, I think our next best chance was the 90th minute. Uh, 
Brewster took uh, the ball from a long pass, headed it right to Moose, who played it off on the volley. Uh, that ball was destined for the goal. Uh, and I think Dean Henderson's only good save of the day was right there, and that saved them uh, the game for sure. Uh, 92nd minute, Paul Pogba ran into Ethan Ampadu. No foul was given. Like a minute later, Ampadu runs into Marcus Rashford. Foul is given. Uh, the managers are jarring at each other. Pogba and Rabo are jarring at each other, getting yellow cards. And then the game ends. It, it kind of was a, a weird way to end it, but uh, definitely some positives to take from here. Hopefully we can we can get things going for us in the next couple games. It's player ratings from um, the 3-2 defeat against Manchester United. Aaron Ramsdale looked better positionally. Six out of ten, although he was at fault for the third goal. George Baldock. Uh, not his most effective game, but did try to get forward where possible. Defended okay, uh, 6 out of 10 for George. Chris Basham, 7.5. Nearly man of the match for Bash. Uh, did very well when moved into midfield. Um, I said a couple of weeks ago that I thought that Basham in midfield would be a good move, and it proved that that could well be the case, although it does leave a hole defensively. John Egan, at times, uh, after Jack Gielke came on, was the only man marshalling that back three and trying to deal with uh, Robinson and Jack Gielke, as well as the Manchester United forwards. Uh, proved tricky, but Eags had a good game, seven. Jack Robinson, six. Uh, second half, tried to get forward a bit. Uh, the long throws do look a bit of a threat when we get forward, uh, which is a good chink to have in our armour. Uh, wasn't great in the first half, but six out of ten. Ender Stevens, terrible, terrible throw in that led to Manchester United's third goal. He just threw it straight to a Manchester United player. Didn't have his greatest game, a five. Uh, five for Sanderberg, couldn't really influence the game. He was only on for a few minutes. Um, the hamstring appears to have gone, so it could be out for a while. Bit low to rate, but an average five. John Fleck, 5.5. Showed glimpses of the John Fleck of old, which was pleasing to see. Should really have scored to make it 2-0. Uh, went the wrong way and should have gone across the goalkeeper. Um, did go missing for many parts of the game. Ethan Ampadu, do, do, ah, well, I don't know. Did he play? <laughs> a very disappointing game. Uh, three, and that's a very generous three. Um, he's in the school of Max Low scores with a three. Didzy, star man, eight out of ten for Didzy. Superb, two goals, created showed himself to be the Dizzy that we know. That uh, looks very good. Would like to see him just behind the front too, as we all keep crying out for. Uh, what a man of the match performance from Dizzy. Well done, Dids. Uh, 6.5 for Ollie Burke. Uh, played, played well, showed pace. Uh, run off a, a little nickel early on. Um, just needs a goal to increase his confidence. Uh, did brilliantly for the first goal, despite Henderson's gaff. Um, it was good to see him bring it back to Didzy, uh, which was a lot more difficult. Um, yeah, had a good game. Substitutes, uh, Rian Brewster, uh, 6.5. Showed a bit of promise, just needs more game time. Lise Mousset, also 6.5. Venomous shot late on, well saved by Henderson. Uh, on another day, that would have gone in. Probably last season, that would have gone in as well. Um, starting to show the partnership with uh, Rian Brewster. Uh, so 6.5 for the pair of the substitutes that came on. And then there's Phil Jagielka, the sub that was subbed to. Uh, sorry, Jags. Um, in behind too easily and cost us the game. I said last week Jags was great in 2003. I cannot believe that that was the substitution that took place. Uh, Jags, it's, it's like driving a Formula One Grand Prix in my Ford Fiesta. It, it, it's not going to work. Uh, finally, Chris Wilder, uh, tough day, the gaffer, a uh, four out of 10. Um, team selection was, was, was okay, but the substitution to bring Jags on uh, was not right. It ultimately cost us the game. Uh, Brewster needs more game time. He has to start more. He really, really does. Um, Ampadu's not looking the part. I am not questioning Chris Wilder again. He still is the right man for the job, and I will keep banging that drum. But some of the decisions are very poor, and we have to have a look at Chris Wilder's signings and how many of the 50 odd he signed have been a success. Anyway, on to Brighton Blades. Um, hopefully, that first finger on the corner. And a more upbeat after my downbeat Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Blades, and the Blades go marching on. 
even if it's not in the right direction. Okay, first positive we can take out of that is that we came out looking miles better than that 3-0 defeat to Southampton. Uh, started on the front foot, pressed high, combination of Burke and Didzy pressing high, especially Burke to force Henderson into that error, and we're off to the races with the opening goal. So that's a, a big positive. Followed in true 2020 Sheffield United fashion by immediately Sandberger getting hurt. Uh, hamstring injury, it looks like, non-contact injury. And so that obviously is a negative uh, that we lose a player who, when you're a club like us with limited squad depth, that's going to hurt. Uh, compounded by another negative, no Lundstrom on the bench. I don't know if he's got COVID. I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know if we've had a bid accepted and he didn't make the bench. But no Lunny on the bench. And instead, in a baffling, questionable, confusing decision, Wilder pushes Basham up to midfield and brings Jagielka in. And then the wheels come off. I mean, Phil Jagielka, God love him, Blades legend, is 38 years old, and he's not going to keep up with Marcus Rashford. So that's a, just a huge negative for me. Going to the break, 2-1 down, against obviously a full-strength, really good Man United side, but we still have a chance. And then they break on us again, and Ramsdale, you know, he's the topic of a lot of discussion, and he's certainly not the only reason we're in the position we're in, or the main reason we're in the position we're in, but he has to save that third goal. He had a couple decent saves during the match, but you can't let that goal go in. Um, and then, from another negative perspective, the 20 minutes after that goal, we just looked a shell of ourselves uh, and, and just weren't at it at all. We get the McGoldrick consolation goal, too little too late, but good to see two goals from Didzy. I think that that is a good sign that he's really informed when it comes to the goals. I think we all really saw that Brewster, Didzy, and Moose are a good and lethal combination up front, and, and we have to make better use of that. Wilder's our messiah. Everybody will say it. Everybody or most people will say they want him here. I do too. But he's got to come under question for those uh, lineup decisions today. I thought the starting 11 was not our strongest, and then not having Lundstrom on the bench, not even thinking about bringing somebody like Osborne or Norwood on when Berger gets hurt, is, is stuff we have to question. But it's Brighton and Burnley next, and uh, it's six points or bust. So... Where do we go from here, Blades? Well, if we carry that effort and endeavour into the Brighton game, we win. 40% possession, six shots on target, two goals in a game against Man United's strongest side. Carry that forward, I'm sure we'll get a result. But team selection now is critical. Against Man United, actually, uh, some of our better displays were using the formation that got us promoted. Um, a 3-4-1-2 as opposed to the 3-5-2. And Wild has got some serious decisions to make now. For me, I would go three four. I would go three five two. Sorry to start with, um, with Burke and Dizzy up top again. That seemed to start well, but we saw Burke tire, and I think that is the point where we need to revert to the three four one two. Maybe sooner though. Maybe just after the second half instead of waiting until sixty plus minutes. Um, bring on Brewster and Moose. Uh, doing that gives Moose a bit more time to get up to full speed. He's still not played full night. He's maybe not even played 45 for us yet. I'm not sure. But actually, yeah, we did see in that number 10 role, Brewster and Moose up front. We looked very good, actually. For me, three at the back is going to be Egan, Bash and whoever gets pulled out the hat next time. Maybe Key and Brian comes back for his injury. Midfield, I'd have Fleck and Ampadu in the centre, Baldock and Ender on the wings. Um, and as I say, Didzy and Brewster Moose up front. Um, and that, I think that'll serve as well. Uh, and midfield is a tricky one because now no burger, not sure how long for. He didn't, it wasn't carried off, so maybe he'll be back soon. Lunny, maybe he's gotten off from the table because he wasn't even, the start, it wasn't even in the starting lineup. So, yeah, some big decisions there to be made in midfield. But a good performance overall. And as Michael Owen said, how is that team at the bottom of the league with one point? Now, come on, Blaze, we can do this. Keep, carry that performance forward, attack them from the off again, and we will get a result against Brighton. We might just salvage this season. Come on, Blaze! Look at that ping from Norwood. Makes other teams look no good. Yeah. We've got a team full of leaders. Alan Hill, Chris Wilder, taught us. Right. Yeah, there was us on the tour bus. Yeah. Look how many goals Billy scored us. It's beautiful downtown Bromley. We are the boys from Shoreham.